heart The very next day Give it away This year Was very, very bad So I'll give it to someone special Last Christmas Was the best one ever The very next year It's totally done Okay I, I get it now. Merry Christmas, everyone. And it's to to an Alex Farrell Christmas special episode number three. Where where this year instead of talking about a Christmas themed episode like special like I, I last did with. With Mickey and the Simpsons, but the third I'm doing is a special one, for a special request for 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 one of my cousins Isaiah Workman for his favorite film The Emperor's New Groove, and here is the twentieth anniversary of it. For a quick summary of uh, of of it, it it all started back. Uh, in October of 1991, when when George Scribner, the director of Oliver and Company, and and and, and the Prince and the Pauper, the Mickey Mouse short film in 1990, was actually that that George Scribner originally was going to direct an animated film set in Africa called King of the Jungle. But in October of 1991, uh, a young fellow who named Roger Allers, who was, who at the time was working on and who actually is known for Disney for a while, known as, as storyboard artist on Oliver Company and the head of story on Beauty and the Beast, actually was signed on to direct King of the Jungle, but... But then later on, while Scribner and Alex got along at first, but but then then suddenly, uh, in uh, on somehow around six months after uh, the announcement was made with the help of of the head of story of originally King, of King of the Jungle, Brenda Chapman, along with. With Don, with producer Don Hahn and production designer Chris Sanders, was working on the film. Before six months of story development work, Scribner left the film due to of uh, of that Allers wanted to make King of the Jungle a musical rather than what Scribner to make a documentary-like film, focus on natural aspects. But after Scribner left. Uh, uh, with the original story, Allers, alongside with Don Hans, Sanders, Chapman, and also Beauty and the Beast directors Kirk Wise and Gary Trousdale, actually quickly worked on a new storyline for King of the Jungle, and for over two days in February of 1992 and in April of 1992, Allers was joined by by one of the writers behind Beauty and the Beast, and also so directed a couple of, Ro of Roger Rabbit short films, R Rob Minkoff, and and both Roger Allers and Rob Minkoff would quickly rewrote the script for, for what would become King of the Jungle to The Lion King. Which became a critical and commercial success, and and then shortly after releasing The Lion King, the the it was announcement that Allers was going to work on an uh, another animated idea with 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 one with writer Matthew Jacobs on. Uh, uh, on an animated film that's instead of setting it in Africa, he wanted to put instead without animals or Africa, he wanted to make, put in set in in South America and with humans. And his next project he announced back in 1994 
called Kingdom of the Sun, which is a dramatic Incan musical that was about a llama herder named Pacha and a, and a selfish emperor named Manco. <laughs> And, and and despite that, The Lion King was loosely based off of William Shakespeare's Hamlet. This story, this time, was based off of Mark Twain's classic novel, The Prince and the Pulper, in which that, without Mickey Mouse in it, would be just South American. And it was going to be about a selfish emperor named Manco, and a, a llama herder named Pacha, both 18 years old, and discovered that they both look alike, so they decide to switch places to after getting horrible lives. But then later on, around 1997, the, the soundtrack was starting to work on King of the Sun with, with fellow co composer, famous British uh, songwriter Sting, like to, to write six songs for the film, uh, how would they do with Elton John did for The Lion King. And also, they decided to to work on, to use, uh, and, and around the story of, of King of the Sun, a after, shortly after when the, uh, when the switch was made, there was the villain of the film to have an evil sorceress named Yzma to... to to, 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 to actually turn Manco into a llama so they won't r replace them again, and, and and things were going pretty good with with both Roger Allers and Minkoff, and also so so the the plot and stuff were made, and after from nineteen ninety four and also. Until 1987, when the pitch was made, an early screen for Disney with Michael Eisner and, and everyone, and, and the Disney executives, alongside with Roy Disney, to check them out, and the results were like this. I don't know about you, but I'm getting all fun out. Uh oh. Don't tell me. The executives hate this, and now we're going to have to restart this project. Yep. Yep. Better start from top to bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Bye! <laughs> uh, so, King of the Sun... Sun... Reviews were very bad. Poor reviews and a rough production. And... And also, they they already had their 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 their, their, their voice actors already made like David Spade, oh, as as the selfish emperor Manco who turns into a llama, voiced by David Spade, and and Pacha the peasant, voiced by Owen Wilson. And also, so the evil villainess, Yzma, is voiced by Eartha Kitt. And also, there was a couple of, uh, of characters that were supposed to be in there, like a, a, a female llama herder that fell, later fell in love with, with, with Manco named, named Mata, who was voiced by Laura Prepton. And, and also... So, so Carla Gino, who's gonna voice, who was originally gonna voice Nia, who was supposed to be the love interest for, for Manco before Pacha took it, and also Harvey Fi Firestein was voiced Huka, who was a ten thousand year old rock, who, who kept a sharp eye on the emperor, who ruled before Manco. Now it's gonna work for Isma. And and also, after that, uh, somehow, just before it was going to be released, summer of twenty twenty, the year two thousand, it was announcement that that it's going to be canceled. But uh, but it says Aller says, please, we need to finish the film just in time for summer because 
promotional deals ads for McDonald's and Coca-Cola were made. But, <laughs> but then later on, on the September of 23rd of 1998, both Matthew Jacobs and Roger Allers left the film, kicked out, and and have to make with, with a budget of 25 to 30 million and 25 percent of the animation was animated on Kingdom of the Sun before before getting replaced by uh, by a couple of newcomers like named Randy Fulmer and and, and Mark Dindell who, who 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 before weren't actually so storyboard artists or and also had little to do with animation, where where they only had been working since the eighties as an, both effects animators, animation effects animator, before and also Martin Dell, who recently got back from Disney after a deal with MGM when working on Cats Don't Dance, and later on getting announcements that. That both, that both, that the screenplay was going to be rewritten with with Chris Williams and David Reynolds to, to write a new version of the film, making this the first Disney movie to be to in over sixty years, and with a new title from Kingdom of the Sun to Kingdom in the Sun. And it was going to be, and it's going to be the first Disney film in over sixty years to be rewritten from scratch after a disastrous box after a disastrous sweat box since Pinocchio, where it was originally dark, supposed to be darker than the animation. Before later on getting a new character named Jimmy Cricket from an actual cricket to a cartoony style. But for for it's mostly similar to how in Kingdom in the Sun for their new draft, instead of a dramatic and romantic themed, it's later changed to a a comedy slash buddy film, and and, and was that Pacho was changed from an eighteen year old an eighteen year old boy that's the same as Monko it is to a forty year old man. Family man, and they changed the name from Monko to to Cusco. That in fears of of that's a bad word in Japan, and also changed the, to, to the 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 year old rock from that that works for Isma, like Harvey Firestein to a, a to a handsome man. It, it, a slash dumb man that's voiced by Patrick Warburton, which became the man child Kronk. But but meanwhile, after that, they they were planned to be released around summer of 2020 before Dinosaur took the role and they decided to give it some more time to finish it. So it's going to be released like this. So it would be released December of 2020. So it was. So it was like, like it was almost similar to Road to El Dorado, but they denied the rumors about it. So it was a success both at the box office and and crit and critics alike. Even though with competition from The Grinch by Jim Carrey, when it was released December fifteenth of twenty two, I mean two thousand, it became an okay at the box office, but successful on VHS. And later on in 2002, getting its own documentary, The Sweatbox, what we were going to be talking about today. So, so it was the reason why I was never what refused to release it was created by Sting's wife, but sadly never got released due to a couple swears. But but it still got released in 2002 from just the only a film festival, and that's it. Locked in the Disney Fault. Never being released on both VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, or Disney+. Plus. So, take a look.